guys, it's Felicity. You may remember me from episode 7 where we learned about the ins and outs of dog breeding. So far I've only been getting to work behind the scenes, but today I get to say hello to you all and interview the lovely Chantel who has been running this whole shebang. Hi Chantel. Hello. All right, and joining me here is also the amazing Afton, our other co-producer who also helps behind the scenes. Good morning. It's not morning, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, hello to all. Hello day. So, she and I will be your hostesses today. Chantel, thank you for having us here today in your lovely apartment. Why did I think this was a good idea? <laughs> I don't know. You seem to like us despite the fact that we only eat your food. <laughs> it was your invite. I know. I realize that. This was your idea. Okay. <laughs> what gave you the idea to make a podcast? Oh, that, that's a story and a half. I have a group of friends. We call ourselves the Naughty Doggos. We're great. There was a point where we hung out like literally every single night. We'd get together, do homework, play games, whatever. And in particular in this group, we discuss pop culture references all the time. And we discuss movies and different things. And one of my friends suggested one time was like, hey, you know what would be kind of cool? What if we like just recorded these and like sat down and just had a podcast? And so it was about a year, year and a half ago, somewhere in there, when I started looking into stuff for a podcast and originally it was just gonna be one mic set in the middle of the table and we were all just gonna sit and do this like pop culture discussion podcast and it never really panned out only a couple people were interested we kind of never really did any strides to do it but then come March the world decided to end as everybody knows <laughs> COVID hit and everybody hit into quarantine and everybody started their quarantine projects suddenly you have all the time in the world and you're like hey I'm gonna do that thing that I said I was gonna do five years ago right 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 <laughs> might as well yeah so that's where the idea to do a podcast came from but the actual like idea of what I would discuss about on a podcast I was like what would I do and I'm like well maybe I'd like sit down and talk to people who have like really cool skills and like because literally I tell you not. All my friends are freaking talented. Like our first episode with my friend Ethan, he does everything from writing to editing to screenplays to acting to doing all these things. And then there's my friend Nick, who was the third episode, and he was a sculptor. And just these people that I had met while attending school, I'm like, why is literally everybody around me so freaking talented? And so that just kind of where it started from. I compile a list of people that I'm like you know it'd be really interesting to sit down and have a discussion with you and try to figure out like pick your brain for a bit and so that's where the idea for the talented podcast came from oh, that's very cool very cool you made the idea with your friends and ended up being about your friends so very fitting don't you think indeed yeah so what were your expectations for what making a podcast would be like oh <sighs> I thought this would be so easy I thought I'd just like everybody would want to take part and I would just sit down with people and record be super simple Editing would be super simple. <laughs> I guess it didn't turn out that way. No, not at all. Unfortunately, people are indeed people and things do not work out that way. <laughs> people are people and do not work out. There was a person I was going to interview about doing dancing during the COVID era and he agreed to be on the podcast, but we like could never set up a time to do it. So like scheduling with people was really, really hard. That was one thing I didn't expect. Another thing I didn't expect was how long editing is going to take it takes so freaking long what was one of the troubles with it oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> where do i start dun 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 i because i've done video editing before and video editing is completely different from audio editing the best way to describe i think audio editing is like writing a paper and editing a paper but you can't see the words and you just have to remember what the next words are and just fit it together and make sure it makes sense. Yeah, that sounds really hard. I, like I write stories, I write essays on my own, and like if I couldn't see the words that were coming next, I'd just be sitting there playing it over and over and over until I had the whole thing memorized. And even then, I'd probably still be wrong. Is that your experience? Uh, kind of. Like I said, I didn't expect editing to take as long. I originally hoped that each episode of my podcast would be an hour. I recorded the first podcast with my friend Ethan, and I was like, you know, we're going to do a half hour. <laughs> and when I started editing, I was like, thank the Lord, my podcasts are not an hour long. So my podcast episodes are about a half hour long each. There's, yeah. a, f there's a few that are longer, a few that are shorter, but it takes about for 30 minutes worth of audio, it takes about three to three and a half hours to edit it. Holy cow. Yeah. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. And producing this podcast did not pan out as 
I wanted to. I started the beginning stages of production of this podcast back in April. I bought the sound equipment. I bought all the things and got things ready to go. Started doing sound tests and all these things. Granted, I got distracted by making renaissance dresses over the summer. Which was super fun, by the way. (laughs) Super fun. Definitely a big project that I didn't expect to take as long as it did. And so by the time we finished the dresses and I was ready to start the podcast, I got hit the quarantine and couldn't do anything for like two weeks. So there was delay after delay after delay. And initially my plan was to record everything in August, edit through September, and then post into October through the end of the year. Well, I recorded in September, October, November, and December. <laughs> And as edited as I'm gone, which is not what I've planned to do. And if I ever do it again, I will not do it that way. (laughs) Well, how will you do it then? I would make sure that everything is recorded before I post, even the first episode. And especially because I'm in my senior year of college. Yeah. It made it really hard because I always had to be like, okay, I have to focus on my schoolwork. And as soon as my schoolwork was done, I was like, okay, I have to finish editing the podcast this week. Yeah. I've been able to post every episode basically on time except this week's episode which was the episode with Calgate about the King of Random. Um, Let's just say I didn't finish the podcast episode edit until like 11.30, and it was supposed to be posted at 10 a.m. Oh, dear. (laughs) Well, that's what happens when it's the week before finals. I mean, that's very true, and at least it's not like, you know, your final essay that you're turning in an hour late. Instead, it's just a podcast, and there is some flexibility there. Yeah, I definitely had to post on my social media saying, hey, due to technical delays... Meaning I didn't do my job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been, it's been fun. It's been hard. But I've enjoyed doing it. Very cool. What has been your favorite thing about doing this? Uh, getting to know my friends better. Like I said, my friend Ethan, he does it all. And I'm involved in a lot of the projects that he does. And learning what like his actual process was interesting. And my friend Nick, he's a, an amazing sculptor. And he's I'd been to his studio before. And he like walked me through the entire process and I still learn more from him when I talk to him and Felicity's mom. So I've known Felicity for six years and I knew her mom and I knew they did dog breeding and that's about it. I didn't know the whole thing about it. And that one probably was my favorite episode to actually edit (laughs) because it was enjoyable to listen to. But I was just like going through the motions, like asking questions and keeping the conversation going. But going back through and editing, I've learned so much about picking the right dog because I'm the type of person that keeps going back and forth trying to decide if I want a dog when I graduate. And I'm just like, "Mm, I'm not quite ready yet. And now you understand the faces I make every time you talk about that, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, getting probably the thing I've enjoyed the most is getting to know my friends better about like what they do and what they enjoy doing. Very cool. Very cool. So speaking of processes, what is your process for making an episode? <sighs> it's been a 10-month process. Like I said, production started for this podcast back in May. I sat down and I asked you guys to be my co-producers, mostly just to be because I'm like, I will probably make all the decisions, but I need somebody to tell me if they're dumb or not. <laughs> <laughs> Which we tend to be pretty good at doing. Like, <laughs> Is this a good idea? No. Try again. (laughs) Try again. How about no? Go to sleep and then talk about it. (laughs) Yes. And so basically it was just kind of creating a list of like, hey, who do I know that I would like to interview slash would be willing to let me interview them? Just creating and asking them to be part of a podcast and just like preparing questions. That's I felt like was not the hardest thing to do, but like the most important thing to do. Yeah. Because when you're interviewing someone, you can get in the moment and a question comes up. But you have to be in that moment, and that moment is created by a question that they already are expecting. In this case, particularly, I have no idea the questions you're going to ask me. So, Mwahaha. <laughs> this is this is different than I would normally do. Um, typically, I would so I select a person to interview, and then I contact you guys and say, "Hey, this is kind of like the general idea. This is what they do. What would you like to know?" Or I'd like ask my roommates or friends or whatever, and get just a general idea of like. If you just met someone off the street and they're like, yes, I do this, like, what would be the first thing you would ask them? So I'd compile a list of questions and then send it off to them. And then depending on when we decided to meet, would come sit down. There, most of the interviews took place here in my apartment, but there was one in particular that I actually went somewhere and did an interview. It was with my friend Anne. I went to her home. It was during the two-week shutdown where you weren't supposed to interact with anyone outside of your house. <laughs> but I needed to record a podcast episode, so I interacted with somebody outside my house. 
And then you very thoroughly sanitized everything, right? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Good. So we'd sit down, do the interview, and then either the week before or the week of, I would edit the podcast. There's only been a few times I've been ahead of the curve. I'm ahead of the curve for posting next week's episode, mostly because next week is finals. (laughs) And I'm like, I don't want to try to worry about doing finals and trying to edit a podcast episode. So over Thanksgiving break, I edited that one and it's ready to go for next week and then post it. And like you post your podcast, not everybody's going to see it. Mm -hmm. Like you could post your podcast, not do anything. Maybe just say, hey, friends, like I did this and maybe two people will listen and that's it. There's a, a whole other side. So that's just the production of the podcast. But then you have to market your podcast. So I also run our Instagram and Facebook page, basically saying like, what I'll do is like the Tuesday before we post an episode, I'll post a picture like meet this week's guest. They like to do this and they're really talented, but I don't fully explain what they do. And then the Thursday before the episode goes live, I post like a little snippet from the interview, not like the audio, but like the words that they can read. Yeah. And then tell them what we are discussing in that week's episode. On Saturday after the episode's post, I cut a little snippet of audio from the podcast uh, either being just like a funny moment or a really serious moment or a moment that stuck out to me during the interview yeah that I feel like would grab somebody's attention and make them interested or just like a funny story that they shared yeah this week's episode in particular our guest Callie um told us a story of when she uh set a stretch armstrong um airborne over utah <laughs> what please repeat <laughs> <laughs> So she works for the King of Random, and they were testing to see if you could fill a Stretch Armstrong toy with helium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so running the social media side is also very important, and having that connection, or well, having connections, it's called networking. 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 I really haven't had a chance to network, because it's just been so last minute, but I would have networked with Evermore. And when I post the episode posted with Callie about Evermore, they're going to have me me to send them the link. And hopefully they will share it. Ooh. (laughs) But also on networking, I have also been contacted by other podcasts. Um, I'm actually going to be on a podcast. I'm recording on Monday the 14th and the podcast will go live on the 16th. Kind of plugging my podcast and just discussing with people there things that I enjoy. Very cool. Yeah, very so cool. networking is a big thing. Yeah, I bet. How did you choose your topics? Like you said, there was a lot of your friends, but how do you pick one thing from your friends' repertoire of? That's it, that one was a hard one. That's why Ethan has two episodes. Because, like I said, Ethan has so many things that he does, and I'm like, I could talk to you each episode. Could just be you talking, and that's a little awkward. Just be <laughs> like, hey, this is the Talented Podcast, and we're only talking to one person. <laughs> So that's why there's a few episodes that are split into two, particularly Ethan's, because what he does is all interconnected, but you could have one episode and it'd be like six hours long of him just talking about everything he does. So that's why I just kind of trimmed it down to writing and screenplaying and then acting, directing, and creating movies. Mostly ideas came from my friends. Like I said, like I said, my friend Nick, extremely talented sculptor, like just knowing what they did or what they were studying was mostly where I got my ideas because you really can't just say I want to interview this person about this subject but then they have no idea about that subject because it'd be weird to interview Felicity's mom about being a sculptor the ideas of the topics came from the people and what they do in their everyday life but picking from those was really hard so that's why there's two people in particular that their episodes are split into two because they're just so freaking talented (laughs) very cool very cool Who would you like to interview in the future? I thought about this because so this podcast originally was just going to be a one off and I was just like one and done 10 episodes. I want to be done right now. I'm kind of to the point where I'm just like, I need a break. I don't want to worry about it. Don't want to think about it. (laughs) No more. (laughs) I'm I'm going into my last semester of college. Ooh, well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to my last semester of college and I really want to focus on it. If I were to do this again, it would probably be until next summer or until I get a job and don't have to worry about school or training programs or whatever. And so if I were to ever do a second season, which is kind of leaning towards most likely, but I won't be for a while. Yeah. Um, I've just like started thinking about people because this first season was more of just people that I knew. 
yeah that i could reach out to and say like hey i would like to interview you my ultimate ultimate dream to be interview somebody from the studio c cast oh that would be cool i think that would be fun i that would be really cool i tried reaching out to someone from the studio c cast because they had their email listed on a public place <laughs> granted i think it was like their business email probably and so i reached yeah. out to them that way but they never responded but yeah i would love to interview somebody from studio c i've talked to actually one of my very faithful followers it's actually one of my coworkers. his name's ryan hello ryan how are you <laughs> We were talking one time, and he's like, you know who you should interview? Drag queens. Intriguing. That would be an interesting episode. It would be. It'd yeah. be intriguing, yeah. It would be interesting to interview a drag queen. I don't know any personally, so I definitely had to <laughs> have to network that one. So if I ever do a second season, I would definitely want to do people who are more interesting than just my friends. I would like to do people who aren't, aren't my friends, people who... Outside people, outside of my friend group, would be interested in listening to. Like, the general public would be interested in listening to. Like, don't get me wrong. This season has been great. I've enjoyed talking to my friends and getting to know them better and what they do. But I also would like to interview people that other people would find interesting. Yeah. All right. I have to, like, actually look at these for a second. Because, like, it's hard to find... I have all these questions prepared that are kind of like a train of thought. But Mm -hmm. you answer some of them as you go. Yeah. That's also part of the thing, is that you ask questions. Like, especially... When I talked with Callie, she she's a great. Don't get me wrong, Callie was great, but she I would ask a question and then a follow up question would be coming, but she would answer that question without me already asking her. So I'd be like, and so you ran out of questions faster than I ran out of questions faster, and so that particularly this week's episode, the one with Callie uh, talking about the King of Random, she uh, that her episode is actually the shortest episode. That it runs it. Mm-hmm. Most episodes are thirty to forty minutes. The average I think is about. 30 with two episodes being about 40 minutes but Callie's episode is only 25 minutes Hmm. her first episode is only 25 minutes and then the one when Callie talks about evermore that one's about a half hour but she had somewhere to be and so we had to get it going were there any projects that kind of like hindered the progress of this yes (laughs) yes (laughs) no hesitation there well the biggest thing like I stated earlier was the renaissance dresses we did over the summer Originally, my plan in the very, very beginning when I purchased these microphones, I was purchased them in April, hoping to have them because I ordered them from Amazon Prime. And you would think Amazon Prime, two day shipping. No, <laughs> and because of COVID, Amazon had to delay a bunch of things. And it, I think the mics almost till a month later. Oh, wow. That's a lot even for Amazon, like especially for Amazon. And it was Amazon Prime. Ooh. Yeah, well, because it was in the beginning of the pandemic, and so they were trying to mitigate people who had to be at work and all these things, and so it delayed a lot of the things. And so started progress on that, but then there was an issue where the table that I was going to use to like set up the microphones for this podcast, where there was no way that we could attach the microphones to the table. Yeah. Granted, now I have a different table because my apartment stole it, gave me a new one. <laughs> and so I had to completely rethink how I was going to set up the microphones I was gonna work with and do like maybe it's just wood stand with my dad or something that we would like put weights in and make sure it was balanced so if like the microphones was a little farther out it wouldn't fall over but I was talking with my dad and at the time my uncle was there and he's like why do it out of wood when you can do it out of metal and he made me these quarter inch steel plates stacked four times on top of each other oh my goodness and they're like there's a four by four and a six by six stand. Ridiculously heavy. But my microphones are never going to fall over. At least it's really solid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really solid. Not gonna fall over. Why build it out of wood when you can build it out of metal? <laughs> yeah, why do it out of wood when you can that. build it out of metal? So yeah, so it was just like in the production process there was um issues. But then um we started on the process of making Renaissance dresses for fun. There was personal projects that came into the way, but then like I said, there was also when I was quarantined. We were just about to finish the dresses up and I was getting ready to actually reach out to people and start interviewing them and uh, ran into the issue of quarantining. I was like, I literally can't do anything. I can try scheduling things for after I'm done with COVID, but I didn't ever get, have COVID. I just had to quarantine. Okay. So what other projects do you have planned in the future, if not a podcast? And I'm not talking about sewing. I know what you have coming for sewing and girl, you're crazy, but <laughs> I, if you're going to do insane. more audio or video, what other projects do you have coming? So I have these two microphones and I've thought about, I was like, you know, I bought them strictly for a podcast and now that I'm done with my podcast, they're just going to sit. And I was like, well, do I sell them? Like, what do I do with them? 
no. <laughs> Afton volunteered to take them, for those of you who can't see her. I, ra- I raised my hand. It did. It's not visual. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I wanted to do this podcast originally with the microphone, so I was like, okay, but now what do I do? I love singing, and I know you guys enjoy singing too, so I was probably going to rope you in. Yes. Into this, I mean, we all we all met in choir for the most part. Yeah, except for me and Chantel, we met in a different class. But I could tell by the fact that when she was singing, <laughs> I could actually hear her. I was like, "She's in choir," and sure enough, like three hours later, I saw her in my choir class. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's faint. Um, but I was gonna. I would love. I don't know. I'm not great at writing songs, but and I'm terrible at other things. But I would love to record covers of songs, especially with you guys. Um. That's one thing that I would really love to do if I ever had a microphone. Just FYI. Right. <laughs> I'd have to figure out how to do it through the program, but just we'd have to figure it out, and I'd love to record covers. Um, I think it'd be hilarious to create a cringy Christmas album. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Sign me up. I'm totally in. <laughs> we have to wear, like, the ugliest sweaters for the picture oh, yeah. and, like, Hard go point. full 90s and, like, we'll have to, like, borrow somebody's cat and, like, look off into the distance <laughs> for the picture. <laughs> Cringy Christmas album. Let's do it. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> but, yeah. I would love to do song covers with them. I actually have a friend borrowing one of my microphones after this <laughs> to do some homework. So I will probably be letting people use them because microphones are expensive. And but when they're you, so much fun. They are so much fun. And so just trying to get use out of them. I've done podcasts, but I'm trying to see what else I can do. Well, my vote is for the cringy Christmas album. Let's do it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> when I did hear that you had microphones, I was like, I want one. I want to sing. <laughs> These ones actually weren't terribly priced. Because the thing is with microphones, as the price goes up, the quality of the microphone and the audio it produces typically gets better. But when you're a poor, broke college student, you cannot afford to do a podcast and have, like, two microphones that's, like, $300. These microphones I were about $40, and for what they are, they're great quality. It takes editing a little bit longer to, like, fix them and make them work, but it works. And you get quality audio. I don't know how singing is going to go, but we'll make it work. It'll be great. It'll be great. If it's bad, it'll just add to the cringiness of the Christmas album. <laughs> yep. So. <laughs> yep. So you mentioned earlier that you have been networking with a couple of other podcasts that are out there. Like, what podcasts have reached out to you? Who have you been talking to? Well, it's just the one podcast. The podcast is called The Evercast. I love this podcast. It's been a lot of fun, but it's been and a lot of hard work. Not to sound ungrateful. And I haven't had a lot of listeners. I've had maybe a couple of my friends listen to a couple episodes. I've had one coworker, Ryan, listen to every single episode. He is behind a couple weeks, but... <laughs> He'll catch up. He'll catch Finals up. So, are almost over. Right. So not very many people are listening. I think because I have the program that I use to host my podcast gives me analytics of how long people are listening and how many people are listening. And my first two episodes have done decent compared to my other episodes. So my very first episode, I believe, only has like 27 views, which is a decent amount. But then it like peters off to like the next episode only has about 20. And mm-hmm. then the third episode a giant drop down where now it's up to like 10 or 11 but for a while it was only it was my lowest episode and it was like three listens and now my average weekly listen is only four listeners a week wow and that's mostly on my part not networking as much as i would like to but now that i'm getting closer to the end i'm networking more and so this podcast that is reaching out to me is because i've networked with them yeah be on their podcast to kind of plug mine, but then to also be on theirs to help theirs as well. Because they started theirs, it's an Evermore podcast started by the Everguard, which is just a big fan of nerds of Evermore. (laughs) And they just kind of do synopsises, they do reviews of different things that happen in park. They knew that I was talking to this person, so they interviewed me. They're like, like, come on, like we're going to spotlight you. And so just networking is probably the biggest thing that I really needed to work on. And is that what you're going to work on going forward is just trying to in- interact more as part of your marketing, as, as part of getting your podcast out there? Yeah. So because I was thinking about this the other day, I was like, I post this final. This is the final episode of this season, which is 10 episodes. And so it's the final episode of the season. And I'm like, do I just like stop posting on my social media after? I was like, well, no, because I'm going to be networking with these bigger podcasts and 
bigger communities like the Evermore community. And so I'm like, I want to engage with that audience even after I've finished posting episodes. So yes, I will continue to network. And yes, I will continue to post on our Instagram. It's talented underscore podcast. I'll post it in the show notes. It's just, I will be posting there, keeping updates, giving them even more behind the scenes peeks at you guys and the different interviews and the struggles of posting this podcast. But just to give some more backstory and history to it to keep audiences engaged. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. Your friend Ryan suggested that you interview a drag queen. I almost wonder if he knows a drag queen. Probably. Probably. I think when I do um, reach out and do second season, if I do, it's, it's still on the fence if a second yeah. season is going to happen. It probably, if it, it wouldn't be till next year. Yeah. But who knows what next year will bring and what you guys want me to make. I almost wonder if you could ask your viewers to suggest, hey, who should I talk to? Who would you be interested in? And that could right. be a way of interacting with your viewers. Right. That's why I, because this, like I said, this season was more of just people that I knew and people that I knew I could get to come on the podcast. Yeah. There's definitely people that I thought I could get on the podcast and weren't able to. One of the people, like, if I were to do it again, I would definitely, like, lock him down saying, I didn't get you last time. I'm getting you now. <laughs> just tackle him and put a microphone up to his face and say, yo, talk. <laughs> Tell me of your talent. <laughs> Probably would be this. There, there'd just be the two that I weren't, wasn't able to do this season. The dancer and a world-renowned chef. I was really excited to talk to both of them because I knew a little bit about what they did and I wanted to learn more. So they, they would probably be what I would do in a season two. Yeah, like I said, mostly just talking to people that I knew and say, hey, what would you want to listen to? Because I can make this podcast for me, which I've done this season, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. But not everybody wants to listen to a writer. I listen to the podcast with my, with my dad who isn't big into reading or fantasy or whatever. And he listened to the first episode, and I was like, so what would you think? He was like, I had no idea what he was talking about. And I was like, well, that makes sense. You would want to listen to something that you are interested in. So felt I've made this podcast for me, but now making it for other people. And what they would want to listen to um, is my goal, if I ever do it again. Very cool. Very cool. Afton, do you have any other questions? Mm, none that I can think of right now. Yeah, I'm about the same. So I think it might be about time to wrap it up. Sounds good. Wrap it up. All right. Well, Chantel, thank you so much for letting us sit down and talk to you. Thank you for all of this fun and for the fun podcast that we've had. Thank you for being my co-producers. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who's taken a listen, whether you're listening here right now at the last episode being posted the day after Christmas in 2020, or if you're listening in a year when you have found this podcast somewhere else. I want to thank Ryan for being a very dedicated listener. Thank you, Ryan. We love you. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who's come onto my podcast. Ethan, Nick, Dan. I know how uncomfortable you were, Dan, but it was great. <laughs> Worth it! <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Ethan, for being really, really patient with me when I was trying to get this going. Thank you, Nick. It was great to talk to you, to get to know about you. Uh, like I said, Dan, you're great. I know you were really uncomfortable, but the episode turned out great. Thank you, Elena, for coming on to my podcast. I love your amazing piano skills, and I'm super jealous, even though I've done piano for eight years. I'm jealous of your skills. Thank you, Anne, for letting me come into your home and interview you. I know you weren't all the most comfortable, but I think I learned a lot about you, even though we worked together. There was so much that I learned. Uh, Felicity's mom, you're great. <laughs> I enjoyed learning about your dogs. I just really want to say a big thank you to Callie. She's an extremely busy person and she took some time out of her week to come sit down with me and talk with about the King of Random, which I'm a super nerd of and love watching what they do. And I really love that she came on and talked about Evermore. Evermore is like a happy place of mine. And I really enjoyed talking with her about everything that goes on there, kind of behind the scenes. But yeah, I just want to say thank you to listeners and everybody who's been with me all along on this crazy ride. Until next time, stay talented. Mm -hmm.